Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning, friends. I am happy to be back here for another Saturday with you guys. In today's video, I am going to be making pumpkin pies for Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving is still three weeks away, but pumpkin pies you can make ahead and put in the freezer. So I'm going to show you some of those shortcuts that you can take so that on Thanksgiving Day, you actually have time to sit and have Thanksgiving Day with the family because you won't be tied up in the kitchen. Since I have to be out of town for a speaking event a couple days this week, I am filming the making of the pumpkin pies on a Saturday. Now, growing up Mennonite, Saturdays were reserved for cleaning and cooking. So the reason that we would always clean the house and cook good food on Sundays growing up in a Mennonite household is because the Mennonites do not work on Sundays. So Sundays is an absolute rest day. So at church, my mom would sometimes, not every Sunday, but sometimes she would invite friends over to come for Sunday lunch and then we'd visit in the afternoon. So we would clean the house and prepare food in case that mom was going to invite people over from church. So in Pennsylvania, the Mennonite community is very, very large. So there's probably 12 different churches in that, that specific old order denomination, which means that people would take their horses and buggies and they'd go to different churches to visit different people. And if you were a visitor to the church, if that wasn't your regular place to worship, somebody local would invite you for lunch. So that was the reason behind cleaning the house and cooking food on Saturday. So I'm going to take you through a bit of our Saturday cleaning and I do hope um, to go more in depth with our Saturday cleaning in a future video. Another reason that keeping a clean house and having a, a refrigerator stocked with good food for the weekend was that because most Mennonite moms Almost all Mennonite moms are stay-at-home moms, so they don't have careers or jobs. So largely, their identity and their worth is found in the way they can keep a house or how good of a cook they are. Um, the same as women in the modern world find their worth with how many Instagram followers they have or what their career is. Um, but in the Mennonite world, because homemaking was the career of all the moms that I knew anyway, that is why there was such a large focus on housekeeping and cooking and teaching your daughters the housekeeping and cooking. Today's pumpkin pie video is part of a collaboration called Thanksgiving Pies, and it is hosted by Carrie at My Table of Three and she will be hosting a live giveaway on November 19th. And all the information that you need for this collaboration, including a pay playlist with all the pies, is in my description box.
So now that the house is all clean, we are going to start making pumpkin pies. But it's a beautiful Saturday. The weather is absolutely gorgeous. Such a change from the last time I was filming. And I would love nothing more than to be outside. I'm not even sure what I would be doing outside, but I'd love nothing more to, than to find something to do outside. However, pumpkin pies are on my list and I know that once these are all done, I will be happy. And I may still find something to do outside later today. If you've watched some of my other videos on pie making last winter, you know that I absolutely love making pies. And I always start from scratch with the crust. But because we're he headed into the holiday season, I'm going to make up a big batch of like a pre-mix for pie crust, and then I put that in the freezer, and then every time I wanna make a pie, all I have to do is get one cup of pre-mix out of the freezer, add some water to it, and that will make one pie. So with all the potlucks and parties and everything that come up, you know, as we head into the holidays, that makes it so simple to just make a pie and take it along, especially with all the canned pie filling that I've done this summer. I'm going to make a big batch of this pie crust mix. So it's kind of like what would you, you would get a Bisquick or something like that, but it's for making pastries like apple dumplings and pies. So in this bowl, I have nine cups of flour. Remember your recipe will be linked in the description. I've got a half a cup of cornstarch and because this recipe goes into the freezer, it's a little different than my fresh recipe from my mom. I have a whole cup of powdered sugar. And then I have half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then I have four cups of lard. You could use shortening if you don't have access to lard. Then we're just going to mix this part all together until it gets crumbly. And I like to have my lard refrigerator cold. Okay, so then when you want to make one pie, you're going to get your mix out of the freezer and you're going to make you're going to measure one cup of this mix and then you're going to start with one tablespoon of cold water. That saved you. <laughs> and then you're just going to try to make it come together. And if it's still crumbly like this and doesn't want to come together, you can add a little more water. Another like half a tablespoon of water. You want it to come together. My mom never measured the water when she was making pie crust, but you want it to stick. I'm going to add just a tad more water because you'd rather have it be a little sticky than too dry. So I think I've added about two tablespoons of water to one cup of dry mix. And there you've got enough to make one pie. So I'm going to use three more cups of this. One, two, three. So now all the rest of this I'm going to put in the freezer for baking later on this holiday season. So always start with less water than you think you need. I need about six tablespoons in this batch. 
and then I'm just going to gently massage the dough until it comes together. So if you find that you've added too much water, like I did, and your dough is too sticky, just add a bit more of your premix until your dough is dry enough that it doesn't stick to your hands. Have you seen one? I haven't. So now I'm just going to put all of the rest of this into the Ziploc bag. And I'm going to store it in my freezer. And there we go. That's for all my pie baking needs between here and Thanksgiving. So I've been making pies as long as I can remember. The first memory of making pies is when I was just a preschooler and I was sitting at the table watching my mom make pies and I had a little rolling pin and a personal size pie dish and I would mimic my mom's actions as she made her pies. When mom's pie and my pie were all done, mom would let me choose the filling to put in my pie. And then we baked our pies and I would share my pie with my little siblings or sometimes I would eat it all by myself. So although my love of pie making started at my mom's kitchen table when I was just a toddler, my mom's love of pie making started the same way by watching her mom make pies. I think that this means that my love of pie making is multiple generations deep. I've enjoyed making pies for my family at my own kitchen table for over 20 years now and it's still one of my favorite things about Thanksgiving and Christmas is that I get to make pie after pie after pie for my family and for my friends and loved ones. So I'm using disposable pie plates because that way when I take them to a potluck or a party, I can leave the pies for the host and hostess and not have, and they don't have to worry about bringing my dish back. So because the entire family is home, the kitchen is a busy place on Saturdays. And as I edit this, I'm reminded of an incident that happened between me and the three youngest boys. They were watching a movie and the family lived in a mansion, a very, very big house. And the boys started discussing amongst each other how nice it would be to live in a mansion like that. And I just told them that I don't think that they would really like it because number one, they probably lose their mom in the house. They wouldn't be able to find me. And Kendrick says, that's okay, mom. I would still be able to find you. I would just always check in the kitchen because that's where you are. So next we're going to work on making the pumpkin pie filling. So first of all, we need three cups of pumpkin. And of course, I'm using the squash that we canned. That's two cups. All right.
right, so we've got our three cups of pumpkin going in. We've got our one cup of brown sugar, our one cup of white sugar, our one quart of milk, which is four cups. So there's our one quart of milk, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of nutmeg. <sighs> Nutmeg's one of my favorite spices to smell. I just love it. I think it reminds me of my mom's kitchen because pumpkin pies was what was one of my mom's specialties and this is her recipe. You can add some pumpkin pie spice if you want, but our traditional family recipe only gets nutmeg. That's it. No cinnamon or cloves or anything like that. Okay, I've got the vanilla, the nutmeg, half a cup of flour, and three egg yolks is all I, or three eggs is what I need. One. Two. So there's my three eggs. And here's my one half cup of flour. So we're just going to blend this together. So you want to blend it until it gets nice and foamy like this. And this, of course, is going to make three pumpkin pies. This is enough to make three pies, depending on how big your, um, your pie dishes are. And we're just going to mix that so the foam doesn't all stay on top. There we've got one, so this recipe makes exactly three nine inch pumpkin pies. So we're going to put them in a 350 degree oven and because I usually just keep an eye on things, I don't have it written on my recipes how long I bake them. I'm going to have to come back and let you know when they're done about how long it took. Um, but I'll give you lots of tips on how to know when they're done. I'm going to start off with setting my timer for 45 minutes and then I'm going to come back and check on them in 45 minutes. So because I have apples that need to be used, I mixed up some extra um, pie dough and I'm going to bake some apple pies while the oven is hot and Hadassah is going to wash together some of the dishes that we've made since breakfast. It's going to be apple pie. That's going to be apple pie. Let him have one. Oh, yeah. Okay, now here, go take the schlap out. Hey. What you got in your bucket? Nothing. Nothing? Come show me. Okay, I won't want to look then. So while the pies are baking, I'm going to take a walk outside. The menfolk have been busy doing work to prepare the farm for winter. 
their focus today and for the past couple Saturdays has been getting the farm ready for winter. So it's been 45 minutes. It's but my pumpkin pies are still jiggly in the center. So this one's the closest to ready, so I'm just going to switch them. Which one is this don't one? touch, oh, don't touch. Jelly. It's like jelly. I'm going to switch spots. That one's, this one's like I know, jelly. it is like jelly. So I'm going to move that one back there. And I'm going to put this one in the front. I'm going to set my timer for another 20 minutes. Actually, I'm going to set it for 15 minutes. Then we can see how it goes. And then we'll see what they look like. Okay, so it's been an hour now. The timer went and my pies are looking much more solid. They're looking, hang on. They're looking a little toasty but I'm gonna set my timer for five more minutes because these cracks here I want to see those cracks more across the center so that one's just beginning to crack it's okay. still a little shaky this one is starting to crack as well but I want to see those cracks all across the center five minutes. okay you're gonna set the timer for five minutes remember you have to turn it past 15 first and then back to five so it rings so after 65 minutes, I remove all three of the pies. And once the pies have cooled to room temperature, I am going to get them ready for the freezer. So first I'm going to cover them with saran wrap. And then after the saran wrap, I'm going to wrap them up in some heavy duty tin foil and what, two reasons, to prevent them from getting freezer burned and so that I can stack them in the freezer. And I'm gonna mark them so that nobody eats them and I can keep these in the freezer for up to a month. So I'm back, the pumpkin pie, as you remember I made three pumpkin pies, so two are staying in the freezer for Thanksgiving and the other one I'm going to use to show you how to get it ready to serve. So it was in the freezer over the weekend. It is now Tuesday. So I got it out of the freezer on Monday and stuck it into the refrigerator and we're gonna get it out and it should be defrosted. So we've got some things, other things going on in the kitchen this morning. I've got my butter churning and I've got a roast defrosting and ready to go into the oven. Um, but first we're going to get our pumpkin pie ready to serve for dinner tonight. So the first thing we're going to need is some whipped topping. And then here's the pie that we defrosted. I got a little bit of it stuck on there, but that's really not going to hurt anything because we're going to cover that with whipped topping. So when I'm um, skimming the cream to make my whipped topping, I want only the thickest cream. So like heavy whipping cream. And I'm gonna mix the rest of this up and use it to make chocolate milk for the kids when they come home from school. So I wanna make sure that I stop the blender before it turns to butter. So now that my cream is whipped, I'm going to add some vanilla, some powdered sugar, and a pinch of salt. So to that, um, I think I had about one and a half cups of heavy cream. I'm going to add a fourth a cup of powdered sugar. I'm gonna add at least a half a teaspoon of vanilla, and then just a pinch of salt. And then we're going to just briefly mix that. Mm -hmm. 
There you go guys, there is pumpkin pie. And this means that you don't have to spend the week leading up to Thanksgiving working yourself to a frazzle in the kitchen. You can make this pumpkin pie now, put it in the freezer and it'll be good as new um, on Thanksgiving day. Next week, I am going to share make ahead mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes that you can make ahead and put in the freezer and get them out and heat them on Thanksgiving day and nobody is going to know the difference. Um, that's a recipe that my family has been using for years and a lot of the Mennonites use them for their weddings and things like that because they can work ahead and make them a month ahead of time.